Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I got into Georgia Institute of Technology uh, online Master of Science Computer Science program. I'll be talking about the application process and I'll also give you some advice based on my experience. Before we get started, I just want to make a quick disclaimer. Georgia Tech didn't give me any specific feedback on what was good or bad about my application, so I can't confidently tell you which parts were right or which parts were detrimental to my application. I'm simply sharing advice based on what I did for my application, which ultimately got me admitted to the program. So a little bit of background about me first. I am a software development major from uh, Western Governors University. I just graduated in February. I don't have any professional industry relevant experience other than a little bit of freelance web development work that I did on the side. Uh, my formal education didn't have a super heavy focus on math or core theory classes. For example, I didn't take uh, calculus classes in WGU. I didn't take um, operating systems class or assembly language programming. That was kind of uh, stuff that I had to uh, supplement outside of my curriculum at WGU. Um, but that initially made me kind of worry about my chances of getting into the program. Uh, however, here I am and I'm excited to share my journey with you. So first off, I want to mention the letters of recommendation. Uh, these are crucial for your application, so make sure that you get really good ones. Um, at WGU, uh, our school is a little bit different than the traditional program where you don't really build like a, a, a super tight relationship with your professor. We have course instructors and you can schedule appointments to work with them if you need help on a class or if you want to discuss anything related to the class. Um, so what I did was I tried to build uh, relationships with the course instructors in my more um, important, more challenging classes, uh, schedule a couple of appointments with them, um, make sure that they got to see kind of my work and see how I um, programmed in, in Java and my course projects and stuff. Um, so they kind of had an idea of, you know, my skill set. Um, so that was important for me for after I graduated because I was able to email them and ask them for a letter of recommendation. Um, and one of them shared their a copy of the letter that they wrote for me and it was awesome. So um, I felt really confident about my letters of recommendation going in. Um, for those of you who go to WGU, I would definitely say I, I would focus on building relationships as much as you can with your course instructors. If you don't go to WGU and you're in a traditional program or a boot camp, I would just say whoever whoever your course instructor is or professor, um, mentor, um, make sure to build a relationship with them and um, ensure that you can trust them before asking for a letter of, um, of recommendation. Um, and remember that you have absolutely nothing to lose by asking somebody for a, a letter of recommendation. Um, the worst thing that's going to happen is that they say no. Um, and so the next thing I want to move on to is portfolio projects. So let's discuss the importance of these. Um, I, I think they're especially important if you don't have uh, any professional work experience. When I applied, I, of course, as I mentioned earlier, didn't have any work experience, but I still got in. I created a resume that included my software projects and my technical skills. Um, I had a few projects um, listed on my resume um, and they were also on my GitHub. I, I had like six or seven projects um, or repositories on my GitHub and it was nothing like super um, complex or um, advanced, I would say. I had, I had some standalone applications, uh, one in Python using Django um, and just kind of had CRUD functionality and user authentication, that sort of thing. I had some Java standalone applications uh, using the JavaFX framework and just a few other things like a command line application. And in my GitHub repository, I'm, I'm currently working on a, on a, uh, a Solidity application um, doing like a decentralized blockchain thing. Um, but to get back to my point, um, I think that you kind of have to show that you at least have some projects under your belt um, because you want to be able to prove that you can um, that you can finish the application or finish the program and be successful in the program. And I think that's mainly what they're looking for. Can this person actually make it through the program and survive through the program? Because it's really one thing to be able to get in and a whole nother thing to be able to actually complete the program, which 
I've heard to be very rigorous and thorough. Um, so definitely, um, if you have projects, list them on your resume, make sure that that's a part of the application, that they know that you have those projects. And then that brings me to my next point, um, the essay questions. So I thought that I was going to be having to write like these big papers on why I wanted to go to Georgia Tech and things about my background, answering these, these different prompts that I kind of had ideas of in my head, but they were actually a lot shorter than I expected, which kind of just emphasizes the importance of being very concise to the point. Um, when answering the essay questions, make sure to just be straightforward. Don't include any fluff. Don't include anything that you don't absolutely need to. I, I would kind of answer them from the perspective of like, what do you think that they want to hear? What are they looking for? Answer it that way. Um, so to conclude, those are my tips on how I got accepted in the Georgia Tech's online Master of Science in Computer Science program. And I hope that you find this information helpful as you embark on your own application journey. Um, I believe the, so the deadline for the fall of 2023 um, for applications has already passed. Um, it passed on March 15th um, and they just started releasing decisions on uh, March 27th. I got mine on April 24th. It took a while. Um, and I believe if you want to, if you want to apply for the, uh, the spring of 2024, you're going to have to apply sometime in August. I, I believe the deadline is in mid August. Um, and it's probably around the same time for fall of 2024 20, was as it was, you know, this year sometime in March that you're going to have to apply. Um, so just keep those, those approximate deadlines in mind. But if you have any questions or comments, um, please feel free to leave them down below and I'll absolutely do my best to respond. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing for more content like this and good luck with your application. I'll, I'll see you in the next video.